Good afternoon to everybody. Uh, I am Diana Balbuena, the Genomics Medical Manager. And in order to continue with our uh, knowledge of ERA tests, we are talking about the endometrial receptivity in, in specific aspects as a endometriosis, obesity, and endometrial thickness. Based on our ERA tests, we can uh, follow the uh, pr the present objective. The first will be to understand the implication of endometriosis in endometrial receptivity gene signature. The second will be to learn about how obesity might affect, affect the endometrial receptivity. And the third one will be the, to investigate the endometrial receptivity status according to the endometrial thickness. So as we know for the, the, present, pre, the, the presentation here, uh, the ERA uh, is, uh, comprises of 238 genes, customized genes, and a bioinformatic tool that can uh, predict and classify the uh, endometrium and the endometrial receptivity. And based on that, we have uh, those genes in implicated in, the, in our tests, and now because it's your second time, you maybe can memorize them. <laughs> and then, uh, according to the expression in the profile, we can um, predict our endometrium as a pre-receptive, receptive, or post-receptive, and <laughs> indicate which is the best time to do our or to perform the, embry the embryo transfer. That means that if we have a blastocyst, the best time to do the transfer will be the day of the maximal receptivity. In almost 80% of the patients, <coughs> it falls in progesterone plus five, but the rest of the patients, almost 25 to 30% per percent of the patients, fall before or after that. So we will now discussing about endometriosis and the ERA test. There is very well known that endometriosis is linked with infertility, and there are describing many single markers, but there are no conclusive studies, exceeds evidences, whether these are a cause, a consequence, or even an artifact. What we know is that endometriosis patients have very poor success rate rates in IVF treatments, as you can say, uh, we can see in this uh, meta-analysis. The important question now is to know what happened. Is the endometrium or is the embryo quality uh, the responsible for those bad results? Based on our outside donation program, you, uh, we can see uh, in this uh, previous study that recipients uh, with endometriosis have similar results with all kinds of infertile, while uh, donors with endometriosis yield poor pregnancy and implantation outcomes in different kind on infertile women. Also, if we see a donation program also, but in this time we can divide the odd size depending uh, from the same women, all of them uh, were uh, healthy, no endometriosis patients, and we divide some of uh, some of half of their their and of all sides were uh, donated to uh, healthy recipients, and the other half were donated to a uh, severe. That means a stage three or four of endometriosis. Results in both cases are similar uh, about implantation and pregnancy rate. So we can say 
that endometrial receptivity is not altered in endometriosis. That seems to be an autocrine, paracrine, paracrine or endocrine effect on the ovary that affect the embryo quality. So in order to know more about uh, the transcriptomic uh, signature in the endometrial receptivity, uh, endometriosis patients in different stages of endometriosis, we did uh, this uh, reprospective uh, study published uh, recently and <coughs> sorry, and uh, it was a prospective uh, a court study and a pilot study. It was uh, in, co in collaborated with the Leuven University, who sent them uh, the, the biopsies in blinding to us. So uh, a total of 22 samples were, uh, were um, tested by ERA test, and uh, some of them, 17, uh, were from different uh, stages of endometriosis and five controls. And all the ERA biopsies were, was, were, were made between 18 to 20 days of the recycle. <coughs> Here we have the results. No clustering were found depending on the endometriosis stages, but in the principal component analysis, we can uh, found these two subgroups, <coughs> but those are dependent of the day of the sample was made. For instance, the, the <coughs> green one, it's uh, from 18 day, and the uh, yellow one, it's from 19 to 20 day. And uh, here, uh, showing in different way, an unsupervised hierarchical clustering was not clustering, <laughs> again, uh, according to the different stage of endometriosis or controls, but subgroups were found according to the day of the biopsy. And here is just to show you the just 13 genes that we can find some difference, but they were related to, with, again, with the day of the cycle, which we went one, we, we, sorry, we, which we made the biopsy. Um, that, uh, here in red, we have the patients uh, uh, we taken the biopsy in day 18, and in blue, we found the patients, uh, the biopsies taken in seven, uh, 19 to 20 day. <coughs> now, transfer to obesity. There are many published uh, related the, the, the infertility and the obesity. That means to apply uh, to all mothers to the um, conception, even if natural, IVF cycles, ICSI, or ovum donation. And especially, it happens if the uh, body mass index is high or uh, if the they have a polycystic ovarian sy syndrome. There is also uh, published b a high rates of miscarriage and pregnancy complications in obese, in obese women. And now let me show you two, uh, two studies that were made for our group uh, in IBF program and in ovum donation program. The first one, it was in IVF program, and we include more than 6,500 patients. And when we classified those patients according to the uh, body max index in four groups, one, two, three, and four groups, we, even if we found that the in, in vitro fertilization laboratory parameters were, were similar, the outcome, the results, the implantation and pregnancy rates were significantly lower in the group with higher BMI. And this is reinforced 
for, for this other work. Uh, also, retrospectively, we see, but not in IVF patients, but also in the program of ovum donation uh, patients. And we classified all the recipients according to, to the BMI and taking in account that, that all the outsides were uh, coming from healthy and non-obese uh, donors. In these cases, again, we can see that just in the higher uh, body mass index uh, patients, the implantation and pregnancy rates uh, worse, uh, worse more than the others, significantly. So now the question is if endometrial receptivity is affected or not in obese women. To respond to that and to clarify the previous finding and to validate clinically, we are doing now a prospective uh, study in collaboration with uh, Stanford University, Baylor College University, and EB uh, Clinic. And we found until now in 88 women collected and classified them in, in the same four groups of patients according to the BMI. And we found that uh, the era T was significantly higher, not receptive in the case of obese and morbid obese patients. If we uh, studied all the 238 genes uh, with the era, we found just these uh, 19 genes related with any pathway rela re in relation with the obesity. Uh, that means uh, insulin metabolisms, glucose metabolisms, or lipids metabolisms. And of those, uh, these four uh, hidden in yellow were significantly different when we compared receptive versus not receptive obese women. So here, again, if we have uh, the knowledge that some patients have an insulin resistance or uh, glucose intolerance syndrome, we can see also that no receptive is more present than uh, in patients with, uh, with no insulin resistance or glucose intolerance. And moreover, again, in those patients, according to higher BMI. And when we see specific, specifically the, <coughs> the measures of the, uh, of the markets who are describing as insulin resistance as those in markers, uh, we can see that they are different expresses depending of the era is receptive or not receptive. So we can say that, that obesity is related with endometrial receptivity. And to uh, finalize, we are now introduced uh, some aspects in infertility receptivity and the morphological uh, criteria that the doctors are using now uh, by ultrasound. We can say uh, now for the ultrasound that a trilaminar uh, endometrial and more than five or six endometrial thickness is related with endometrial receptivity. But it's really true that. So here in, in, the, in this number of era cases that we have, we can see uh, the relationship between the uh, era results with the endometrial thickness. And we can see that in the group uh, between 6 to 12 millimeters that we consider as normal, we can found until 22% of the cases era diagnostic, diagnostic it as no receptive. And only in the cases of atrophic endometrium with uh, less 
more, less than six millimeters, no receptive was higher. So based on, on all this data, we can conclude that endometrial receptivity at the molecular level is not affected in the utopic endometrium in patients, in patients with endometriosis. We can say also that obesity, and especially patients with insulin resistance, are related to an increase of the displacement the, of the in window of implantation. And we can say also that in endometrial thickness between 6 to 12 millimeters, the percentage of receptor and no receptor is about 75% and 25% similar to the hypertrophic uh, endometrium. However, in atrophic endometriums, there the, uh, the non-receptor cases increase significantly. And that's all, and thank you for your attention. Mm, if you want to ask me, <laughs> you can start. Thank you. Thank you.